in today's video, we will simulate the phenomenon of a laminar flow occurring through a circular pipe and validate it with analytical results. We will start from basic concepts like the Reynolds number. What is meant by a fully developed flow and its allied concepts and relation. We will then look at the problem definition, which will include the pipe parameters and the fluid properties as well, which will be followed by a brief uh, description of the governing differential equations and the necessary assumptions, which will help simplify the GDEs. After this, we will move on to the actual process of simulation, which will range from geometry construction and its discretization to the simulation. And we will then conclude with the result analysis, wherein the simulated result will be validated against the analytical result. Reynolds number is a non-dimensionalized number that is used to predict the fluid flow pattern. It is the ratio of inertial forces exerted by a fluid to its viscous forces. It is calculated by dividing the product of density, average velocity, and characteristic length, which is the diameter in the case of pipe, by dynamic viscosity. And the Reynolds number at which the flow becomes turbulent is called the critical Reynolds number. The value of the critical Reynolds number is different for different geometries and flow conditions. At small or moderate Reynolds numbers, however, the viscous forces are large enough to suppress these fluctuations and to keep the fluid in line. Thus, it's called laminar flow. And for internal flow in a circular pipe, the generally accepted value of the critical Reynolds number is 2300. During the, the flow through the pipe, uh, the inlet velocity profile is uniform while flowing due to the viscous effect the boundary layer develops. And after a certain length, it will remain constant as shown in the figure. The length after which the profile was constant is called entry length or hydrodynamic entry length in the fully developed flow region of a pipe, the velocity profile does not change downstream and thus the wall shear stress remains constant. The hydrodynamic entry lengths is approximately equal to the product of the diameter of the pipe and the Reynolds number divided by 20. The fully developed flow profile is given by the formula shown on the screen in the middle. The maximum velocity achieved by the fluid during laminar flow is twice the average velocity. We will now have a brief discussion about the governing equations, which describe the behavior of flow through a pipe. We have assumed the flow to be steady, fully developed laminar, and with its properties being constant. Additionally, the pressure gradient across the pipe cross-section is considered to be zero. Additionally, we neglect the effect of gravity for this case. As seen before, the velocity profile has a maximum at the center, which means the derivative must be zero. The wall, the velocity is zero due to no slip conditions. And by integrating the differential equation twice and applying the previously mentioned boundary conditions, we can find out the relation which is the, the variation of velocity and radial direction. The following are like the pipe dimensions and the, the fluid properties which are to be considered for the simulation. Special care should be taken that the length of the pipe is greater than the hydrodynamic entry length to ensure that the flow is fully developed. The following values are calculated by using the analytical relations provided for the laminar flow through the pipe. First step is, is to set up the fluent project by dragging the fluent into the workbench and then click on geometry and open design modeler and create the geometry as shown with appropriate dimensions.
note change the body to fluid from solid and don't forget to click generate before closing. Now open the mesh by double clicking the mesh option in the workbench and selecting the mesh. Apply body sizing and the multi-zone method, which creates the hexaheter mesh. Add inflation near the wall. The importance of inflation is to capture the velocity gradient near the wall and capture the velocity profile accurately. Create the mesh by clicking generate and then div name selection as shown inlet, outlet, and wall. After all the steps, click on Mesh and click Update so that the Mesh data is transferred to Fluent which enables it to read upstream data. Now open Fluent and click Double Precision. After Fluent is fully open, use the Scale option to view the dimensions of the geometry. So we will be using Pressure Bath Solver under Steady State Conditions. As we are dealing with laminar flow, the laminar model will be used in the materials tab. The fluid properties will be specified. By default, air will be present as the working fluid. The most similar fluid to our problem is water. Thus, add water liquid as fluid and edit its properties as per the problem definition. However, in the cell zone condition, edit the material name and change it to water liquid. Now in the boundary condition, click on the inlet and set velocity as per uh, the problem and wall as a no slip condition, which is the default assignment to the wall by Fluent. Now on the solution, methods choose the scheme coupled with the remaining setting and controls as defaults. In the monitors tab, set the residual, which is the convergence criteria, to 10 and raise it to minus 5 for better convergence. Click on the initialization tab and select hybrid initialization. Um, although one can choose uh, standard initialization as well, create a new surface report definition uh, with the report type as facet maximum and select outlet. This will also serve as a convergence criterion if the residue has not converged up to the desired limit. Now it's like run calculation with the maximum iterations set to desired value and click on calculate. After calculation, do post-processing of data to obtain necessary results for validation, like velocity profile, entry length graph, and other parameters as shown to plot the velocity at the center of the pipe, create the line using the line and rake tool from surfaces and give appropriate coordinates to the line. Uh, you can name it uh, as per your choice as well same for generating the parabolic velocity profile. Create a line at the outlet and give coordinates as per the geometry. To plot the contour of velocity, um, a plane must be created in the required direction. 
But for the pressure drop, I guess make a midsection plane by using the ISO surface as shown. And then make a surface of the wall for a fully developed region using ISO clip. In that select mesh in Z direction, select the wall and input value as uh, shown and named it the surface. Now plot the result as shown in the video. To plot the center line velocity, which is used to verify the entry length, go to XY plot set Z axis one and select velocity magnitude and write them in the required folder, which can be plotted in Excel. Similar steps are required for the plotting of the velocity profile, but in the XY plot change the plot direction to Y as 1 and the rest is 0. But for the pressure drop, calculate using surface integral in the let's select the area weighted average and select static pressure. Similarly, for the friction factor, we will first calculate the wall shear for the fully developed region using surface integral in that select area weighted average and select wall fluxes and wall shear stress. And from the formula, we'll find the fanning friction and Darcy friction factor. The following are the results obtained from the simulation carried out on Fluent. The left figure represents the fully developed parabolic velocity profile, which is formed at the outlet of the pipe. Profile also matches the theoretical profile of laminar flow. The figure on the right represents the variation of the fluid velocity at the center of the pipe over the entire length of the pipe. Now, that's, we can observe that right around the theoretical entry length, the velocity starts to become stable with no further variations by comparing both the analytical and simulated results. We can observe the findings are within the acceptable error ranges to further improve the results. One can try to perform the simulations at higher mesh counts or even different mesh types. Another method to improve the simulation is to try to achieve better convergence conditions. 
and following are the references and one can go through them for complete derivation in detail. And that's all for today's video. If you have any doubts or suggestions, please do comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching and we'll meet in the next video.